So this is a 6S LiPo battery, 2200 milliamp hours, uh, about 25 volts, and you can use it to fly planes, fly helicopters, um, probably run tools. Um, you know, it's a battery, it can be used for a lot of things. But what can happen is you can take it to the field to go fly, and you just don't get to it, so you bring it home fully charged. When you do that, you'll want to discharge it so that it lasts longer because the chemistry of these batteries makes them degrade if you store them fully charged. So they just won't hold as much and they won't be able to put out as much power. The other reason you might want to drain a battery that you haven't flown with or used is to test it. So you might want to see how much um, milliamps hours it actually holds. You might want to see how much current it can actually deliver. So this is a device that I designed and built that can do those things. And I also built this little adapter thing that will let you do multiple batteries at a time. So this will handle between 1S and 6S and it will um, do about um, technically 400 watts but I maxed it out at about 300. So let's go ahead and drain this full battery. So I just plug it in. Turn it on, and you can see that there's some options there. Um, maybe I move a little closer. But basically it's a menu that asks what kind of battery you have and how much you want to drain it, and it's fully customizable. So to go, you just hit the Go OK button. It's hard to do this on camera, of course, and it's ready to go. And it gives you a lot of data. I will zoom in close. So while it runs, it monitors a lot of things. It monitors the watts, it monitors the amps, it monitors the temperature, and it monitors the voltage. And any of those things can limit the amount of power it allows to draw. So in this case, it's the power that's limiting it. But as the temperature continues to rise, it might be the temperature that limits it. Or if you have a weak battery, it might be the voltage, because this measures the voltage sag. Smaller batteries have more sag, and it will detect that and not pull on the battery quite so hard. So as it's draining, you can see there's a heat sink here and a fan here. The fan will only run if it needs to, but for this big of a battery that has this much power it's definitely going to need to and then underneath there is a gap so it can pull up air so if you look up top that's what it's pulling up so a battery like this will take about four to five minutes before it gets to the voltage threshold which I have set to about 3.8 volts per cell Oh, as you can see now, now it's gotten up to 65 degrees Celsius, which is the maximum temperature that I've configured it to um, stop at. So now it can't quite do 300 watts. Actually, if it was a cooler day outside, it's kind of warm outside, like 85 Fahrenheit. If it was cooler outside, it would be able to um, keep that temperature down a little more. Um, but that's the day that it is, so we'll just let it go to that. And it's just going to continue until it gets to the uh, voltage threshold, and then it will be done. Alright, it's done. So in this case, it took it down, it took about 706 milliamp hours out. You may wonder why it didn't take all 2200 out. Well, that's not the goal. The goal isn't to completely drain the battery, it's to get it to its storage voltage, which is about 3.8 volts per cell. There's a fuse here. Um, I think I have that set to 30 amps. I could probably get away with a 20 amp fuse, but you know, if there's a short or something else happens, uh, this fuse will burn out and protect your battery and protect the unit to a degree, you know. Um, and I think that's all I'm going to say about it here. Uh, this would time out, but you can also just hit off at any time to shut it off. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how it works. So the key ingredient in this battery drainer 
is a FET. Um, this is the FET that I chose that can handle 462 watts if it's properly heat synced. So you just bolt this directly to the heat sink with some um, thermal paste and you make sure the heat sink is getting proper cooling. Um, the way the PFET works <laughs> in a nutshell is you have source, which is connected to positive, drain, which is connected to negative, and a gate. And the voltage of the gate will determine how much current is allowed through between source and drain. So I built an example here using a program called Falstead, which is an online circuit simulator. It's not as accurate as something like LT Spice, but it's really nice in terms of putting something together quickly and playing with it. So here we have our FET that I just talked about. We have a resistor. Uh, in the actual design, I have three 400 milliohm resistors. If you connect those in parallel, you end up with 133 equivalent. The reason I chose three is for power dissipation, but the reason this is here is primarily so that we can get a voltage measurement here. So the microcontroller that I'm using will measure this voltage and divide it by the resistance using Ohm's law. And by that, it can determine how much current is flowing through here. On the gate here, we have a potentiometer the real design doesn't use a potentiometer, but this is our starting point for understanding what's happening. And then this graph here is going to show power. So let's go ahead and start. So to start, we have about 10 volts. This is our battery. Um, this is the positive terminal. This is the negative terminal. And we have about 10 volts because of the potentiometer setting. And in that setting, nothing is allowed through. And thus we have no power. If we start to lower this voltage here, it'll start letting current through. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see as we lower the voltage, it lets more and more current through. And as a result, this FET dissipates more and more power. So right now we're dissipating about <clears throat> three watts. And if we continue to lower the voltage, we will dissipate more and more power. And as you can see, this value is going up as well. So we'll be able to measure this current here. The other thing I'll mention, let's put it back to the middle, is if you change this voltage here, it also affects the current quite dramatically, actually, and the power, because power, like I said earlier, is voltage times current. So we're getting quite a bit. So 25 is the 6x, 6s maximum. So here we can lower it to the point where we're doing 850 watts, which would burn up the FET. So that's why we have to monitor these things. Um, and also we have a fuse in there to avoid though that extreme case. So hopefully that makes sense. And what we're going to do next is replace this part of the circuit here with a closer representation of what is really happening. So here we go. Click. OK. So here the goal is the same. We want to change this gate voltage, but we're going to do it in a more um, microcontroller friendly way. So the way this works is we have a capacitor and a resistor. In fact, to start, let's get rid of this wire here and not focus on this. So we have a capacitor and a resistor. And as this powers up, it's this resistor is going to fill this capacitor until it gets up to that value there. So let's go ahead and start and watch that happen. So we get a huge spike of current in the start, but as you can see, as time goes on, this resistor is filling up this capacitor all the way up to 9.9 .9 volts. And once it gets there, this is going to go back to nothing. Now that we have this filled, the job of this is to empty it. So let's go ahead and put that wire back in and start to empty it. So by default, this thing's putting out nothing, so we're not emptying it. But if we start to give this a square wave, then it will open and close this, which will pull little bits of current out of there. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll give it, there we go, give it a little bit there. And you can see that this capacitor voltage is being pulled down. And as a result, this voltage is making this open up so we can give it more duty cycle 
to give it more. We can give it less duty cycle to give it less. So you can see there's a little bit of um, sawtooth action going on here. And although it doesn't really matter in terms of the FET and drawing power, it does make it a little trickier to measure the um, current and the voltage, which we need for to determine what the power is. So there's a couple of things we can do there. One is we can put a we can smooth out these readings with a capacitor or in software. Um, the other one is we can up this frequency. This is at 400 hertz. The real one's running at like 32,000 hertz, but let's just increase it to 1,000 and watch what happens. So you can see a higher frequency is going to smooth that out as well. So that is how this thing basically works. Um, the real one's a little more complicated. It actually has two different ways of draining it. And the reason why is because if we open this all the way up, then you can see the voltage can't get below a certain number, 1.6 volts in this case, um, which if you don't have much voltage can be a problem in terms of how much current you can pull. So the way we did, uh, the way I approach this is to have a secondary one um, with a much lower resistance, and then you can pull that down further. So they're actually both in there. All right, so that's all I wanted to talk about as far as how the circuit works. There's a bunch more stuff in there, but it's mostly just measurement and power control. Um, and, you know, it gets to the point where it's just too much to learn in one video. So that's basically how it works. To wrap up here, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the design. And given that this was a version one design, it was um, a little bit over designed and overbuilt. And it cost me about 90 ish dollars in parts. And I think I could build a second version um, that works just as well for probably half that price. And if I wanted to sacrifice a little bit on capability, then I could get probably down even further. So yeah, that wraps up the video. And if you liked it and want to see more, uh, consider subscribing, liking, all that. And in any case, I hope you have a good day. Thanks.